Happy New Year, everybody. I haven't been filming for a long time because our house has been filled with kids' activities. I just couldn't find time to film any nice, fancy videos. But then now Chinese New Year is coming close and a lot of people have seen me on uh, social media that I'm making a lot of things preparing for Chinese New Year's and people are asking me about the recipes. And to be honest with you, every time when I'm preparing for Chinese New Year's, I'm so busy, I don't have time to really film and edit the video. So I always think in my own brain, brain that I'm gonna film video after Chinese New Year's, right? But the truth is, I started cooking for Thanksgiving and then Christmas and then sometimes New Year's and then Chinese New Year. So by the time after Chinese New Year's is done, I seriously have no energy. I just want to be lazy for a little bit. So I never got to filming anything about Chinese New Year. So this time I thought, you know what? No fancy videos. I'm just gonna take you with me, just using my phone and just show you how I prepare for Chinese New Year's. A lot of times the, the preparation is a month long okay a lot of things need to ferment for a while so a lot of you see that saw that i am making these pickled vegetables the mustard green um because winter chinese during chinese new year's time this is the season for this kind of mustard green but i haven't been able to find any good size mustard green to make the, this pickle so these are kind of small in our standard but then the other day i actually saw like really good big size mustard ring. I got super excited, so I bought them home. So I was gonna make it and show you guys how to make it. But now I'm a little worried because I realized my pickling jar, the oh, the, the the opening is, I don't know if it's gonna fit, but then we'll we'll figure it out together. Okay, to make this, Suan Cai, okay? Pickled mustard ring. All you need is the mustard ring some sea salt, okay? I use molten and I bought, I buy, you know, bucket of it because I ferment all the time and it's really good with grilled veggies, steaks, lambs, it's awesome salt. And some bottled water, you know, um, I'm lazy. You know, the old time, the grandma or my mom, they will hard boil, the, uh, boil the, a pot of water and let it cool down and then use that water to ferment. But I'm lazy, I use bottled water, okay? Anyways, all right, and then you need a good scale just to weigh everything that, you know, so you have a good rind and all that. All right, let's get started. So we're gonna wash them first. Some people wash, some people don't, but I cannot not wash my veggies, but you don't wanna wash it really well. You just kinda wanna lightly rinse it because they are famous for having sands, you know, in between these stems and stuff. So let's do this. First thing first, for this kind of fermentation to succeed, first thing is, of course, you want the good germs to fight the bad germs, and then the good germs win, then the fermentation, perfect, right? And no grease. They cannot touch any grease or oil. So you really want to wash out all the surface that you're going to, you know, wash it with or work with so that there's no grease, no oil. So you can succeed because fermentation takes like three weeks to a month and you really don't want to, you know, have this spend this time and effort to work so hard and then 21 days later you realize uh oh you failed and that's such a disappointment so you want to be extra careful when you ferment you just want to wash it really well all right now we just open it up and then we want to rinse it really quickly And if you have any leaves that are dropping off or kind of like already not very healthy, you want to sacrifice them because they could be the reason why you fail the whole thing. So it's not worth it. So you just kind of want to rinse it inside out a little bit just to make sure the sand kind of comes out as much as possible. And you don't need to go hardcore to wash it, okay. So 
go in to rinse it a little bit. If you don't wash it, you can just start fermenting. But if you do wash it like me, you want to dry it, air dry it really well before you start fermenting. So it can take about a full day for it to dry up really well. Even, you know, looking like a little wiltering, you know, kind of dry, that's good. You just don't want it to be wet. <laughs> if you see any unhealthy looking leaves, sacrifice. gonna let them dry here for about a whole day so we'll come back at night to start the fermentation good morning everybody so I let the mustard grain dry overnight I should have probably done this yesterday last night but I was tired I lazy so I didn't do it so some of the leaves are turning yellow which is fine we'll just kind of take away those yellow leaves you want healthy leaves okay because you're gonna leave this the, them in the jars for 21 days so you really want to make sure everything is healthy and all that and clean before they go in so I already washed my hands because to pick all these veggies the most important thing is you want to sanitize everything so everything is clean and second thing is grease grease is the enemy of fermenta fermentation so I wash my hands just in case you know sometimes we have lotion skin care you know all that so you wash your hands with soap and all of these things i already washed them with uh, detergent and i also spray them with some alcohol just so that i can sanitize them a little bit and because i did that so i kind of want to use the clean water which is the bottled water uh, kind of rinse off the alcohol that i sprayed on top you know and the jar, I also sanitize it with alcohol. So I just want to make sure that I rinse the alcohol away really well. And I'll do it again. Normally I use bigger bottle of bottled water so that we don't have to open up so many you know, plastic bottles. But today I'm out of it and I don't have time to go out to buy more, so we're just gonna use the smaller jar bottle. Okay, I don't smell alcohol anymore, so that's good. And now, and then also when you sanitize, you wanna make sure the rim of your uh, jar or what container also sanitize. A lot of times it's all these rims that you didn't sanitize, it didn't clean well enough, and then it failed, okay? And I also bought these weight thing to kind of you know, sometimes they float up, so I also bought these weight thing from, you know, online. Um, I sanitize them as well, so I'm going to rinse off the alcohol. One more time. I also sanitize my hands before I started, so. So that's it. Okay, all, now, the salt. Okay, all you need is salt and water now. Salt is important because my mom always say, oh, you want clean salt. And then what is clean salt? You don't want to just grab the salt that you're using when you're cooking that you season food with because most of the time there's grease in there, you know, because grease float in the air when we're cooking or when we're, our hands are greasy and then get into the salt. So that's not clean salt because grease is the enemy, right? So I always have a bucket of salt that is in the pantry that's clean, that's not contaminated. And I take those salt to pickle my whatever veggies that I want to ferment, okay? So first thing first, you take your vegetable, your mustard green, you want to rub it with salt really well, okay? You want to rub it. You know, the part that you can touch, you just kind of want to rub it really well, okay? So you want to take some salt out to do it so you don't contaminate your bucket of salt. Okay, and then using salt back. Grab it. 
I'm going to leave. Drop it really well. You kind of soften it too, so that it's easier to put in a jar later. And then um, you can squeeze it because you kind of want to squeeze them together. If you can open it up, don't break the um, veggies though. So. Do the best you can to kind of rub the soap on it. And I will give you the measurement of my, the weight of my veggies and the, how much salt and water I put in. Because normally, I don't measure. I just do it. But today, I'm going to measure for you. Because people will ask me, so how much salt do you put on? To, uh, uh, do you use? So I'm just going to give you the whole, uh oh, so I broke this leaf, I'm going to sacrifice it because this single leaf in there is going to um, go bad, so you don't want that. Uh, what was I going to say? Okay, I'm just going to give you the total amount of salt that I use to rub and put in the water, okay? So I will let you know the total amount. So you just get that amount of salt and you use it to rub and you use it to the rest of it to put in the jar with the water to, as the brine. Okay, so this one is pretty good now. And I'm gonna kinda, you see, it's already getting softer. So you just put it in. Okay, like that. Okay, now I can't put the fourth one in, so I'm just gonna do with these three first. So what I'm gonna do is just to add water to kind of cover up the 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 the, the veggies. Okay, there's still a little bit that's poking up. That's fine because you know in a day it's all gonna welter, and then it's gonna shrink, and then. The veggie itself will release some more uh, water or you know out so it, the water will cover the mustard green in a day or so so we're just gonna add in more salt into the water to make it a brine and then after I added all the uh, salt in there that is enough I like to cover the top with a little bit of salt too, because it's just kind of peace of mind that it's, you know, you can kill bad germs. <laughs> All right. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the weight to press it on top. You don't need to press it all the way yet, you know. It's okay with the weight's help. Tomorrow you will see that they will all submerge, be submerged under the water, they will not float up. All right, now we're just gonna seal the jar. Okay, so what I do is I use some kind of plastic bags and I sanitize this side because this side is gonna be the side that covers the jar. Just, just so nothing contaminate. Okay, and then I do another one here. You do however you want to do to seal the jar. I don't like to use a lid because a lot of time, you know, around the lid, it could be, you know, hiding some kind of germs if you don't clean it well and sometimes it's, you know, trouble. So this way, if I find that every, you know, every couple, of, every few days, if I check on it and then I find that, mm, I, I feel like the cleaning, the hygiene of this cover is compromised, it's easy for me to switch, you know, so I like to use this. And to make it look cute, I put on a cheesecloth and I do a twine like this. Okay. And, pull it. and this way it's easy for me to check on it every time. Okay, so we're just gonna leave it and then um, come back 
in 21 days, the truth is you're probably gonna come back every few days. And if you can see from here that that's nothing growing or nothing bad is happening and on top of the, um, the, the, the water, the brine, then you don't have to open it up, you know, to check on it. And the less you open it up, the better it is because it's just less chance to contaminate this brine. And don't worry about being too salty because if it's too salty, but then it, you know, the saltier it is, the less chance that it will go bad. So the chance for you to succeed is higher. And this kind of pickle, every time when you cook it, you could just soak it in water to get rid of some of the sodium, so make it less salty before you cook it. And that's what we do for the one that we bought buy from the market anyway. So don't worry about it, the brine being too salty. You actually want to worry about it when it's not salty enough. And once you become a, a, a experienced fermenting, you know, expert, then you can control the saltiness better. But then if you're first time doing it, just try to make it work first, okay? I will uh, let you know how much water and how much salt that I use in this jar and how much um, mustard green uh, I have in here, how, how, what the weight of it. And also, if you make it once and then, you know, you want to make a second jar, you can keep some of the brine from the first jar and then you put it in the second jar, it will speed up the process and also it will make it more flavorful and it will be, I think it will increase acidity so it will be more sour. So if you like that, keep some of the brine from your first jar and then you always add it to the next jar, okay? Now, let me show you what it looks like in 21 days. So this, okay, it will turn yellow like that is normal and you want that okay if you see that it's turning this color you know you get it right and the brine is gonna turn a little cloudy and that's that's the right way to do it okay you, your brine is gonna turn a little cloudy like this there's no chemical there's no uh what's that called artificial color or whatever that is adding in this is just like what you saw here it's just water and salt okay Beautiful. It smells good. It tastes good. It's delicious. All right. I hope this helps you and happy new year.